Okay, so how do we write uh, a polynomial, an unfactored polynomial into factored form and find all zeros? I mean, we could just do real zeros like this page I've got open here from the textbook is real zeros. They aren't asking us to find the complex zeros, but we could just extend this into the complex zeros. And that's part of what I'm asking you to do in that, that math, math exercise set. So you can always use all those, you know, the P over Q tricks, you know, the, the, the limits on uh, uh, what is it, Cauchy bounds you could use. And that works well in the 1600s. Um, what I'm asking you to do today is, in this day and age, is make sure you understand how the graphs can help us find those zeros, okay? So here's, a, so I'm in the textbook on the, what is it, section three, five, I think. And here's, a, here's an awful fifth degree equation, right? I don't want to try to factor that. I mean, yes, I could, I mean, what factors, I mean, could you do the P over Q thing and think about well, what are the factors of, of 200 and uh, 2,304? I don't want to do that. So I threw it into a calc grapher, Desmos. And what I'm seeing here, remember, so this is a fifth degree equation. So from our work we did last week, we know that the ending behavior is going to be headed down as X goes out to negative infinity y goes down to negative infinity. As, as x goes out to positive infinity, y goes up to positive infinity. So I know because of that, these graphs are not gonna curve back down, back around. So there, there it is. So I'm seeing that this graph crosses the x-axis in two places. And I know the, the fundamental theorem of algebra tells me, look at the biggest exponent, it's supposed to be five zeros. But these are just, these, are, these have some multiplicity going on. Do you see how this kind of wiggles through that zero at x equals negative four? So that is at least degree three. And this is bounces at x equals six. So that's at least degree two and three plus two is five. So that's all the zeros that there are. So the shortcut way, um, you know, is this okay? Sure. And the next problem I'm gonna show you, you have to be able to do more than this. Now you could verify this. If I asked you to verify it, what you could do is I would just run a synthetic division through um, maybe I should do this for you. I know negative four is a zero. And what is the polynomial? It's, it's, it's one X to the fifth, zero X to the fourth, minus 60 X cubed, minus 80 X squared, plus 960, plus that 2304. And then if we just do synthetic division on this, let's see, that's, that's, that's negative four. That's maybe, maybe, I don't, do you need to watch this? Maybe I should stop the video and, and uh, get through this part. So I ran the synthetic division through, the remainder was zero as I knew it would be because I know that it's a zero. Now, because this is a multiplicity three because it wiggles through it, we need to, I and mean, if we had to verify that, we could run negative four through again. And bring down the one, and then you do the same process over again. Again, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pause this video and come back. So, I, as you see, I've got a lot more work here. So I knew negative four went in again. I knew it was another zero. Again, yes, the remainder zero. Then since I knew it was multiplicity three, I ran it through again. Yes, it's zero. So I've got three of the zeros accounted for here, and this looks like it's a double zero, so I'm gonna run six through the synthetic division. And once I did that, I got X minus six is as with the quotient, with the remainder of zero, of course, and then when X minus six equals zero to X equals six. Yes, I could have done synthetic division again, but why at this point, okay? So uh, once you get down to linear linear equation, a linear term, a linear factor, it's, it's pretty easy. So there's, I verified that all these zeros are zeros and I've got five zeros as I'm supposed to. So what is this in factored form? Well, you could write this and now we're, now we're to the point where we gotta keep my math happy. We could either write this as, I mean, what I would do is I would write X plus four to the third power times X minus six to the second power, and I've got it done. Now, my math might want you to write X plus four three times and, and X minus six twice, but you know that, that's, that's, that's just making the computer happy, the code happy. Okay, so that's how you can graph it and verify it analytically. Um, 
would I really want to see that you did this if this were what I asked you to do? Probably not. You know, I'm going to ask you a harder question than that. Than that. So let's, while we're there, let's talk about harder questions. Let's, let's look at something here. I'm going to clear out everything. I'm going to turn off the fifth degree equation and have it graph this third degree equation, which is up here at number 15 in section 3.5. Now, if they want us to find all zeros here, let me uh, let me tweak my window a little bit here. I only need to go down to say negative negative twenty. Let's see what that looks like. Whoops, not uh, two thousand eighty-seven, and make this go up to positive twenty. Yeah, it's looking good. Uh, right there. Actually, that's all I need. So I know that as x goes out to negative infinity, this third degree equation will go down to y, negative infinity. And as x goes out to positive infinity, y goes up to positive infinity, because that's a positive leading coefficient, right? And it's a third degree equation. The other thing I'm seeing is I'm only seeing it across the x-axis once. I know it's not going to, I know it's not going to turn around and head back. And I know this isn't going to turn around and head up. So I look, I only see one real zero. Um, so to answer this question, section three, five, find all zeros, so it's seven, okay? But how can I verify it? Now, what you studied was that P over Q trick out of the books that do in the mechanical, the, you know, the old fashioned ways. So here's my P is one, Q is seven. So I know it can be plus or minus seven, I right, set plus or times plus or minus one, all over plus or minus one. So the possible rational zeros are, are seven plus or minus seven, or plus or minus one, we see seven, right? So we know that was the one to use. So, but the, if we're asking us, if I'm asking you to find all zeros, we got to get rid of that real one. And obviously the other two have to be complex zeros because it doesn't, there, there aren't, it doesn't turn back around and hit the X axis again. And the fundamental theorem of algebra says there has to be three zeros. So let's run synthetic division through this for seven. And let's see, so, seven, at least this isn't that Mongo equation like the last time, one, negative seven, one, and negative seven. So what do we have? One, I got seven, zero, zero, one, seven, zero. So that means I've got X minus seven. That's one of my factors. And the other one is gonna be, let's see, this was X to the third. I divided off an X. So that's X squared and plus one. So I could use the Pythagorean, I mean, I could use a quadratic formula for that, or I could just extract the square root. I know that x squared plus one equals zero, x squared equals negative one, and when I take the square root of negative one, I'm gonna get plus or minus i. Right, so what are, the, what are the factors of this? So another part I'm gonna ask you, and the myopen math will ask you, is write all the, all the factors, all the, all the zeros as linear factors. So one of them is x minus seven, the other one is x minus i and x plus i, because remember there's a plus or minus, okay? So that would be this expression, this polynomial written as a, as a product of linear factors. And I get all zeros there, counting, counting the uh, um, counting complex. So that should take you through, here I get a my open math assignment up here. Um, that, should, that should take you through question 13 and question 15 where they didn't tell us any zeros, okay? So go ahead, throw them in a grapher. If you're lucky and you get all rationals, that's fine. You know, I'll never know that you did it wrong, but make sure you know how to do this division to remove them because I, I am gonna ask you that on the exam. Now, this last one, question number 14, let's go look in the book just so, just so that you, uh, I don't do that one for anybody in case you get that ver version of it. But that's in this complex zero section here. Let me uh, let me pause this video and get that up for you. Okay, so I just graphed. I threw this number. Let's see, what is it? Number thirty-eight in the textbook right there, and I put that into a graphing calculator, or put that into Desmos. And that, I don't know what that answer is, but I see that one's negative one third, right? And I see that one is one one and a half. So if we think about that P over Q thing, I mean, if, if these are rational answers, rational roots, they should come out of that P over Q thing. This is just them double checking to make sure I type things in and I'm not doing too much or not doing wrong work because this is gonna be evolved, right? Um, so let's see, which one am I doing? This is this one, right? 
So P over Q would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, plus or minus 12, all over plus or minus, what's the leading coefficient? Six. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus six. So I'm thinking negative one third is a rational root. Do I see negative one third? Well, there's, there's a, there's a, here, let me get a pointer. All right, here's one third, so that agrees. And what do I think the other one? Three halves, and there's three halves. So yeah, these are, these are probably, the, probably the rational roots. These other ones are just wonks, and that's gonna require more work. So let's verify that these things are our rational roots. So one third, negative one third, and I'm gonna run, what am I, two, where is it? 38, I said, so six, 17, negative 55, 16 and 12. I'm gonna erase that little dot just in case I confuse myself, which I have done before. Okay, then I'm gonna bring down the six. Six times a third is two and it's negative. That's 15. One third of 15 is five and it's negative 60. One third of 60 is 20 and it's negative, which is negative four. Negative four times, uh, oh, what's happening here? Just a minute here, I gotta figure out what I did wrong. It should, be, it should be getting 12, right? Found it. Negative 55 plus negative five is negative 60. Negative 60 times negative one third is positive 20. That will make this 36. 36 times negative one third is negative 12 and that's zero as we knew it would be. So, and then we think the other one is three halves. Well, we're pretty sure it's three halves, so. I'm gonna multiply that through. So that one, let's see. So three halves, I, some of you might be struggling with fractions, so let me slow down here. Some people like to think of that when I'm multiplying six times three halves is 18 over two, which is nine. You could also say two goes into six, three times three times three is nine. That's how I usually do it in my head, just to keep the number smaller. So that's gonna be positive, positive nine, is it? Yes. So add those, you get 24. So again, uh, 24 in. We're gonna have 24 times three halves. Well, half of 24 is 12. 12 times three is 36. We're gonna subtract those. What is that? Um, 24, negative 24. Half of 24 is 12 times three is 36 and it's negative negative 36 and it's a zero, and we knew it would be. So I've divided off, so I've got x minus one third. The better way to write that is, or x, yeah, x plus one third, I mean. The better way to write that is three x plus one. Okay. Because if I had x equals negative one third, I could multiply both sides by three and then add one, right? And that was where that's coming from. The other one on the same line of thought is 2x minus three. And then I've got 6x here. Let me write this, can I write this over here? 6x squared plus 24x minus 24. And I wanna know when is that equal to zero? Now some things that happen with synthetic division and I don't know why it happens. I've asked some people who are a lot smarter than me and they couldn't give me a good answer, so. I just know this is what happens. I see I can factor six out of everything. Now that six comes from, because I divided by three and divided by two, so three times two is six, that always happens. I don't know why, I, I wish I did. But so because I can, I'm setting this equal to zero, I can divide, factor out a six and get it right out of the way. That pulls those numbers down to be much smaller and makes our work a lot easier. Now I know that these are not, I know this isn't gonna factor because these numbers are not very nice numbers. So I'm just gonna throw this right into the quadratic formula. You can also, uh, you know, use completing the square if that's your preference. And honestly, folks in pre-calculus, uh, you do not have to show me the quadratic formula for this. You can go use a solver and, uh, and do that. I mean, I would wanna see this set up, but then 
you would you know you want to say what am I what am I doing? I'm solving this equation for zero. But if you use a, 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 a some calculator, some solver to find those zeros, you can. Just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to do the synthetic. I'm going to do the quadratic formula here. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus four times one times negative four all over two times one. If you were one of my Oxbow students and you had one of my classroom graphing calculators, I've got this TI-83 program in it. Uh, or you type in the, you, you run the program, you type in A, B, and C, and it gives you the roots. So let's see, so plus or minus four, square root of 16 plus 16 is 32, all over two. And then uh, negative four plus or minus, let's see, 16 times two is 32. We'll take the square root of 16 is four, root two, all over two. And then I can cancel a two out of everything. I can factor a two out of the numerator and then divide by that two in the bottom. So I'm gonna get two plus or minus the square root of, of two. Uh, two square root of two, sorry. So then, must be dot is equal to negative 4.828 and positive 0.828. Now, how do we write this as a set of linear factors? Here, can you see this down at the bottom? So those ones from above, 3x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 times x. So remember, we're going to do minus 2 minus two square roots of two. Actually, it's negative two minus square roots of two. And if you wanted to distribute through the negative and clean up those, those negatives, you could. And then the other one is gonna be x plus, uh, sorry, x minus negative two plus two square roots of two. I knew I had to change the sign somewhere because of the plus and minus, right? I wrote the minus one here. I have the plus one here. So those are the list of, those are the linear factors of that polynomial. Uh, it happens, you've got, you get imaginary numbers also. Maybe I should do, um, here, just a minute here. There's one, I have, one thing I have not done is I haven't done an, an exercise where they tell you this complex zero. Let me make one up here and uh, we'll help you get that. So I think I've done that in another video. I'll do it again here. Okay, so here's a problem I fabricated. It's a fourth degree polynomial. They're telling me what are the zeros is this imaginary number, this complex number. So what you wanna think about this, how do you tackle this? Well, I certainly don't wanna do synthetic division with a complex number. I can, it's, it's, it's very, very possible, but we don't wanna do it if we don't have to. So. Remember this i came from taking the square root, right? Taking the square root of a negative number. So if I, uh, if I square this, so I'm gonna square both sides of this, this, this equation, this root equation, and what does that give me? That gives me x squared equals, well, let's see. Um, that gives me negative two times negative two is positive four. I times I is I, I, I squared, which is negative I, which is negative one. So this side becomes negative one. And because I'm really looking for a, a factor, I'm gonna add that four. So here's a factor. And that's where the complex zeros come from. I know they're supposed to be a total of four zeros. So if I, I only get to do two more. Remember, complex zeros occur in conjugate pairs. So, negative two i and positive two i have to be zeros. Because if I were to solve this, right, if I were to solve this right now, when is that equal to zero, I'd go back to plus or minus two i. So then what I'm gonna do is I can't, unfortunately, as I said, I don't wanna have to do um, synthetic division with a, with a complex number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little long division here. And that's a little more writing. So I'm just gonna write this in here. I won't bother pausing it. Okay, and now what times x squared is x to the fourth? Well, x squared. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times four is four x squared. And then we subtract, so it means I change the signs. And the x, fourth, x to the fourths drop out. And what is that? That's a minus, well, minus four, that's a four. So that's negative two x squared, uh, negative two x, uh, this, sorry, this is a cubed, this is a squared. Then I'm gonna bring down the negative four x minus eight. And then we'll do it again. What times x squared is negative x to the third? Well, negative x, 
negative x times neg positive x squared is negative x cubed. Negative x times four is negative four x. Remember to subtract, change the signs. I'm left with negative two x squareds. The x's cancel out. And um, something, that, oh yes, I'm okay. Minus eight. And then I ask myself, what times x squared is negative two x squared? Well, it's negative two. Negative two times x squared is negative two x squared. Negative two times positive four is negative eight. Change your signs, lo and behold, the remainder is zero. We knew it would be because they told me that was a zero, right? So what am I left with? So I know I have x squared minus x minus two is the quotient. And I wanna know when does that equal zero? Well, there's no, no greatest common factor. Um, does this factor, let's see, what gives me x squared? X, x times x. And what gives me negative two? Uh, negative two and positive one. And lo and behold, I get my answer. So the other two zeros are x equals one and x equals negative one. Uh, x equals two and x equals negative one. So what is this in factored form? I'm gonna write x minus two. I'm gonna write x plus one. I'm gonna write this as x squared plus four. And there's my four degrees. There's my four equations. So that is what I'm expecting to be able to do. Uh, and it's not a calculator question. I mean, I guess I could have found, I guess I could have graphed it and found the negative two and positive one, but that would have not made use of the complex zero. So you want, know, I think this is the easier way to do it. Give me a yell if you want to walk through some stuff live, make just grab an appointment.